All right, so uh, I'm heading off to work. Um, the goal for today is to uh, get the software dumped over in the C rig. Um, all the patches from the A rig, all that stuff we did last year, because I haven't really used it in a while. And uh, tested the MIDI system. Um, <clears throat> I have not used the mastermind with that particular rig. I should all be fine, but I just want to plug everything in, make sure all the channels are communicating properly and all the patches are happening. And then uh, do a quick little uh, line check with it. Check all the uh, converter outputs and make sure the trigger's happy. And then um, I think probably over Rick's house tomorrow or maybe Tuesday. I haven't talked to him this weekend, so I'm not quite sure yet uh, what day, but some of the next two days we're gonna bring over to his house and get him set up so he can start uh, running the show and make sure he's happy before we uh, head back to uh, on tour. All right, see you guys in a few minutes. We're gonna call today's video uh, the Sea Rig Tour Part One. Um, today was mainly focused on the uh, physical bits of the kit, the uh, the triggers and the hardware, um, and very very briefly uh, gone over things. I'm gonna do uh, some much more detailed stuff tomorrow, as I'll have more time in the locker. Um, but for what we have uh, for today, it's just a brief little overview of what we have um, set up for, uh, for Rick's kits. Um, the only difference between the C rig and the A and B rigs is the, is the rack system. Um, his A and B rigs are one piece units, um, basically permanently bolted together, and it's a, a custom made square rack system. Um, the C rig is based off a of Yamaha hex rack. Um, Rick is a Yamaha Dorsey. Um, if you guys have watched any of, or actually, if you're watching my kit tours on YouTube, or if you've actually been to one of the uh, behind the scenes tours with Rick, um, you probably re re heard me refer to the kits as the uh, world's most complicated four piece drum kit. Um, when I say that, I basically mean that from the crowd perspective, you're hearing a four piece kit, you know, uh, kick, snare, rack, and floor. Whereas on the input side of things, there's a lot more going on. Um, we kind of uh, refer to the kit as sort of a top and bottom kit uh, when Rick and I talk about it, um, in that uh, the bottom is a, is the row, all the row of uh, uh, foot triggers, and then the top you have another uh, basically row of triggers um, mounted on the cymbals and the pads. Rick has six foot pedals available to him. Um, in a normal uh, uh, kit configuration, using uh, which we call base kit, um, the configuration is from left to right, uh, cable hat, kick drum, snare drum, floor tom, and then on this left foot, his right foot is a normal kick drum pedal and an auxiliary kick drum pedal. Uh, now these pedal assignments can change depending on songs, um, and uh, we'll, sometimes we'll flip the floor tom and, and kick drum pedals around, sometimes there'll be different sounds, sometimes there'll be loops. Um, and that's kind of way with the whole the with it, this entire kit. It all kind of changes depending on the song. Uh, at this point, we have a different patch for every song in the set. Um, on the upper part of his kit, he has a snare pad, uh, dead center, and then from left to right, um, there's a the X hat, and then he has three more sets of hi hats in front of him. So in total, he has four sets of hats. Uh, and then there's a three pads off to his uh, his right, which is a rack tom, floor tom, and another kick drum. And above that we have a trigger bar on the far right, and there's two trigger bars among uh, over hat number two and hat number four. Uh, and then there's also the ride and the two crashes. Um, the reason for so many hi hats is because uh, without his left arm, Rick can't do keep timekeeping or do like a tap. Uh, on on his on a hi hat like most drummers would do, so instead of doing like a t -t 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 by lifting his foot, what he does is he actually alternates between the middle hi hats. Um, the three hi hats are directly in front of him. One is uh, the first one. Um, uh, I'm gonna ignore that the the X hat, the remote hi uh, cable hat in these discussions because it's just basically normal hi hat. Um, we actually refer to the three hats in the middle as hat one, hat two, hat th and hat three. Uh, just for as far as trigger assignments. So hat one is as is, is, uh, tight, hat two is a slushier hat, and then hat three is tight. So hat uh, one and two are his primary hats. For So he will actually alternate back and forth as opposed to doing a, lifting his foot. It's more of a t -t 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 
back and forth between those two hi-hats. Um, those are also his primary loop hi-hats. If you're a song like Rocket or uh, Let's Get Rocked, there are also tambourines that are layered on top of his hi-hat hits. And those are triggered off those hi-hats. The, uh, the last hi-hat, uh, more often than not, is actually a snare drum. Uh, reason being, it's just for uh, range of motion for where he plays certain licks. So he has a snare drum that's uh, uh, more accessible for certain parts of certain songs. Um, above the very first hi-hat is, uh, is a cowbell trigger bar. Um, we do occasionally throw other sounds up there, but it's almost always a cowbell. And then among ha over hat three is another bar, which is almost exclusively a kick, an extra kick drum. It's really just all about placement for a range of motion for certain licks. So you can hit certain beats at certain parts um, and be able to pull, pull off the, uh, you know, pull off the songs. Um, the last hi-hat is also used for stuff like uh, more extended loops, um, say on Love Bites. Love Bites has a really, really long percussion loop that's about two bars. I think it's the longest loop we actually have in the set. And that one's off that hi-hat. Um, on the mic side of those things, we have um, the middle hot pair of hi-hats, the tight slushy hats. I have one mic that covers both hats. The last hi-hat is actually um, kind of covered by the ride microphone, which is in figure eight pattern. So it gets a little bit of that ride. So sometimes you'll hear a hat that's not quite as pokey as the other one. And that's that particular symbol, which we have turned off on the trigger side of things. So there's no sound assigned to it. And it's just a closed hat. Um, what else? I think that's kind of the basic for the actual hardware of the kit. It's, uh, it looks a little more complicated than it actually is, or sounds a little more complicated than it actually is. Um, essentially, everything on that kit is a, a trigger aside from the remote hi-hat, cable hi-hat, the ride and two crashes. Everything else is something we assign by song and um, pick the sounds for. I'm going to go into the software side of things tomorrow and show you guys the software we use and how we assign the stuff and you know why we do what we do. But the, um, the actual uh, trigger setup or the hardware setup is basically, you know, I told you, it's, it's relatively simple. Um, I didn't get any footage today of the uh, the actual foot triggers themselves, it's the actual, uh, which are on the back side of the pedals. Uh, I'll get some of those uh, some shots that tomorrow. It was a kind of a, uh, a hurried video shoot as I had to get out the door because the warehouse was locking up because um, I closed early on Sundays. But um, I hope that was a little more informative, you guys. I, I, I don't think I've ever actually filmed the trigger, so no one's actually on the hi hat, so no one's actually seen it before until today. Um, if you if anything you guys want to know, please put in the comment section, and I'll make sure to try to address that tomorrow when I go through an electronic side of things. If there's anything that's not clear, if you want better quality footage, because I'm sure this is kind of a little, little crappy today, um, just let me know, and I'll see what I can do about tomorrow. All right, catch you guys later.